So now we're going to look at Newton's second law for rotation. We've spent quite a lot of time looking at Newton's second law for the translational case. So we're all quite comfortable using that the net force is equal to the sum of the forces acting, which is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now for the rotational case, there's an analogous equation. We've got that the net torque is equal to the sum of all the torques acting, and this is equal to the moment of inertia times alpha, the angular acceleration. So let's consider the simplest case and see if we can show this equation. So imagine that we have a massless rod of length r and we place a mass m, a point like mass, on the end of it. And then we apply some force to that mass. Now we'll make our, let our rod have an angle theta with the horizontal and we'll let the force have an angle phi with the radius, the length of the rod as shown in the figure. Now if we want to calculate the torque that this force causes, we can use that the torque is equal to R cross F, which is equal to RF sine phi. Phi here is the angle between the radius and the force, just like we've shown in the diagram. So this is actually equal to r times the tangential component of the force. As we can break that force into a radial component and a tangential component. So the tangential component of the force is equal to the mass times the tangential component of the acceleration. That's just an application of Newton's second law for the translational case. And we have seen that the tangential acceleration is given by alpha times r, where alpha is the angular acceleration. So let's put all of these together now. We've got that our torque is equal to the radius times the tangential force. So the torque is equal to the radius times m times the tangential acceleration. So the torque is equal to the radius times m times alpha times r. Or we can rearrange that to write it as m r squared alpha. Now for the object we've just described, a massless rod with a mass m on the end, a distance r away, the moment of inertia is just given by m r squared. So you can see in this case the torque is equal to i alpha. But is this generalizable or have we just shown it for the simplest case? Well, we can actually extrapolate this for all cases because whenever we're considering a continuous body, we just break it up into lots of little components and add all those components together. So by showing it for one small component, we can actually extrapolate this to whole continuous bodies. So the generalizable formula is that the net torque is equal to I times alpha. So let's see the type of problem that we can solve with this now by having a look at a worked example. So the question is, consider the Atwood machine pictured with M1 is equal to 1.0 kilograms, M2 is equal to 2.0 kilograms, capital M is equal to 1.0 kilograms, R is equal to 0 0.10 meters. Calculate the acceleration A of mass M1. Okay, so this question is a little bit different to previous ones where we have ignored the mass of the disc. We now know enough about rotation to account for the moment of inertia of this disc in our calculations. Okay, so in this one, we start with the normal way. We'll use Newton's second law to write down the forces on all of the three bodies in the system. So on mass M1, mass M2, and also on the pulley. So on M1, we've got a tension pulling it up. Because of the pulley, there is a different tension on either side. So we've got tension one over here and tension two here. So using Newton's law with mass M1, we can say M1A is equal to the net force on M1, and that's caused by the tension force. Now, because M2 is heavier than M1, we can safely assume that it is going to accelerate this way. So we can say the tension force is pulling it up and then we've got the weight force pulling it down. Those are the only two forces acting on this mass. On mass M2, 
we've got the weight of M2 pulling it down and the tension pulling it up. So we've got M2G minus T2. Okay, and now we've got to consider our pulley. We've got two forces acting on the pulley. We've got T1 and we've got T2. And these are going to act to give it torques. So we can write I alpha is equal to the torque due to this one, which is given by R times T2 because it's acting at 90 degrees, it's pulled along the radius, minus R T1, as these forces are acting in opposite directions, so they'll create torques in opposite directions. Now we're going to want to simplify this expression a little bit. So there's a number of things that we can do. First of all, we know that the moment of inertia of a disk is given by a half m r squared. So we can substitute that in for i. We also know that the acceleration is related to the angular acceleration through the acceleration is equal to r alpha. So this tells us that alpha is equal to the acceleration over the radius. So we can substitute both of these into this expression here. So we've got a half m r squared times a over r is equal to r t2 minus t1. Okay, now what we can do is cancel this r with one of these r's and the r on this side with the r on this side, which gives us a half m a is equal to t2 minus t1. So let's write that down here. We've got a half m a is equal to t2 minus t1. Now what we have is three equations, one, two, three, that we can solve simultaneously. So we can do one plus two plus three. And this gives us m1a plus m2a plus a half m a is equal to T1 minus M1G plus M2G minus T2 plus T2 minus T1. So now you can see the really nice thing is that this tension cancels this tension, this tension cancels this tension, and the acceleration is common across all of these terms. So we can rearrange this and say, well, A times M1 plus M2 plus a half M is equal to m2g minus m1g and then we can rearrange it to get our acceleration our acceleration is equal to m2 minus m1 let's pull g out as a common factor over m1 plus m2 plus a half m and now these are all things that we have so we can substitute in for our system here and solve this so we've got 2 kilograms minus 1 kilogram times g which is 9.8 divided by 1 plus 2 plus a half times 1 and then we can solve this on the calculator and we get 2.8 meters per second per second so this is the acceleration of mass m1 and so we can say m1 has an acceleration of 2.8 meters per second per second upwards.